Hi and welcome to another video. This video will be a sketchbook tour of this A5 size sketchbook filled mostly with doodles and mixed media stuff. So I like to write down when I start the sketchbook and when I finished it, but I forgot to write down when I finished it. So most of the sketchbook is filled with pages like this one, uh, where I have an acrylic painted background and then I doodle on top with a technical pen mostly. So this is a 0 0.8 technical pen, I think, or a 1.0 technical pen, which creates quite a bold line. There's another one with an acrylic painted background and the technical pen I used here is a little bit finer. I think this is the 0 0.5. When I doodle over acrylic, sometimes the technical pen gets clogged, but it's not a big deal. I just shake it up and wipe the tip of the pen to clean it off. And you can see the dry brush effects that you get when working with acrylic. So this is just a cheap acrylic from the art store. What I like about this page is these darker areas that I've repeated in several places so that they kind of stand out. It's still a bit jumbly and I was trying to move away from creating a doodle that is looks pretty uniform. So it's very noisy but nothing really stands out. So by creating these darker areas and repeating them, I was trying to get some areas to stand out and look different from others. And this is something I wanted to explore further and I still do. I think I have a lot to learn and experiment with. This is a sketch I made in a park near my old apartment. And here's another doodle over an acrylic painted background where I tried to leave some areas blank. And you can see that I had some writing over here and then I painted over it. So I really like how this sketchbook isn't precious and I can just scribble and then paint over some pages. This is a sketchbook from Redbubble and the design is by G Massam Art. This uh, tape in the center is because the sketchbook was damaged. I guess during shipping and actually Redbubble sent me another sketchbook identical to this one. So that was pretty cool. The pages in this sketchbook aren't any sort of artist paper. They're just pretty much plain white paper. And that also helps, you know, just pick up a pen and pick up a paintbrush and just scribble and doodle in it without worrying too much about wasting good paper. Here's another one where I tried to create some composition. I tried to create some things that were flowing in different directions, some patterns that differentiated themselves. So here is the more jumbly kind of doodling and then here is a different kind of pattern. I think this was inspired a little bit by Sophie Roach and her work. If I mention any artists in this video, I will leave a link in the description of the video where you can find these artists and I really recommend you check them out because they're awesome. So here you can see that I tried to create this element which seems to be in front of this element and then this element here. So these things are hiding behind this element and then the leaves are also floating on top of other parts of the drawing. So I still think I have a way to go with composition uh, but this was just one attempt. These marks were made using a brush pen, so it's really easy to get these thick and thin lines. I think I'd just gotten the brush pen and I was experimenting with it a little bit. So you can doodle with a brush pen, but it's a little bit slower going because of the sensitivity of the tip. But you do get these thick and thin lines, which is interesting and different from a fine tip pen or a technical pen. Here's another doodle over an acrylic painted background. I usually just choose whatever colors for the background. I don't overthink it and sometimes the colors work and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're too dark. And here's another one. This is a sketch of a rose that I repeated several times and then I think I completed it in watercolor. So I like to sketch things more than once to sort of feel the shapes and understand them better. I think it really helps to sketch the same thing over and over. Here's another one over an acrylic painted background. Again, it's more jumbly, 
nothing really stands out. Maybe these empty leaves stand out a bit. And maybe this thing with the darker edge stands out. I think people still like this jumbly look, but I really wanted to take it further and, you know, kind of have more hierarchy and more composition in my doodles. Here's another one with lots of flowy lines going in all sorts of directions. Here's an example where the background is a little bit too dark, I think. It still works, but I think it's good to try things out, see that you don't like them, or see that you do like them, and then learn from that, rather than beating yourself up and saying, oh, why didn't I make this background lighter? Because you need to make mistakes, and you need to try things that don't end up working in order to find what does work, I think. Here's another one over an acrylic painted background. And this is a sketch I made uh, following a reference photo, and I made the same sketch over and over again to try to improve. And then I think I painted this in watercolor. Here's another one from a different reference photo. A few more sketches. Here are some thumbnail sketches of value studies. I think I painted this later on in watercolor and I, I made a YouTube video about that. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. And this one is again with the acrylic painted background and then with the Dr. PH Martin's Spectralite ink on top in magenta. I really love this ink and I ran out of it and I think I'm going to get a new bottle of it. So you can see that it's kind of shiny. It's kind of raised over the surface. And I really like this color. And I think a lot of other people have liked this color when they saw it. And this one is a doodle where I tried to space out the elements a bit, not make them too close together and too cluttered. And then I colored in some of the shapes using a couple of Copic markers in gray. When you use Copic markers, you really need to put something behind it because it'll seep through to several pieces of paper, depending on the paper that you're using, of course. And that's the great thing about acrylic paint is if this page bled through to this page, then I could just paint it with acrylic and then doodle on top and use that page. You don't have to, you can just have your drawings only on one side of the paper. Um, in your sketchbooks, but this is something that I enjoy doing. Here's another one with more chunky doodles and with the uh, grays in Copic marker. Here's one that I think didn't work so well. This is again the Spectralite ink. So because it is transparent, you can see the dark blue through it and it kind of made it too dark, I think. Here's a doodle using, I think, a fountain pen. So you may not be able to see, but the black isn't as black as with a technical pen. Here's some fox sketches. I don't remember what they were for, but I was probably trying to draw a fox. And this is a mountain sketch that I started. Another chunkier doodle and another experiment with painting in acrylic inside the shapes after I drew the lines. So again, I don't think this one worked too well, but it's an experiment and sometimes things come out of experiments that don't happen immediately. So this experiment might lead to a different experiment that will succeed. There's another scribbly background in acrylic and then that Spectralite ink over top. So you may be able to see that the ink is transparent and you can see the background through it, which I think looks really nice. And here's another page with brush pen experimentations, trying to see what kind of line qualities you can get with a brush pen. In this page, I repeated just the same element over and over. And this can be fun, but it can also be kind of tiring. I find doodling and mixing things up all the time is a lot less tiring than repeating the same thing over and over. But sometimes 
repetition looks really cool. So I do try it sometimes. And in this page, you can see how I repeated the same things. So I repeated these thick stripes in several places. I repeated this design in several places to try and tie things together and to try and make things look a little bit different. I think it still looks kind of jumbly and I have a ways to go with that experiment. In this one, I used gel pens for the coloring and I left quite a bit of white. And here I tried to leave the white space. So you can see that I'm not too careful about not smearing ink or acrylic paint on my drawings. And I think that just makes my sketchbook a little bit more approachable to me and not so precious. I'm not too worried about messing up a few pages, even if they're completed. Here's another experiment with a repeat shape. So it's a very simple swirl shape that I just repeated and built up. And I guess I got tired at some point and then I went and added these marks again with the brush pen. Here's what happens when I draw on this paper from one side. This is what the other side looks like. And I think this may have been what prompted me to try and paint over this with acrylic and draw on top of that. Here's a page I started covering with acrylic and then I guess I didn't finish it. I think I tried watercolor on this paper, which is obviously not watercolor paper. And some more experiments that I don't think they were very successful, but I think it's good that I experimented. I like here how this pink in the background sort of shines through. And another one with gel pens. Here's another experiment where I created this solid fill using acrylic paint after I doodled this design. And then on this page, I continued the design, but in a different way. So using the gel pens a little bit more for the lines. I think it's an interesting experiment. Here's another experiment where I tried to have elements that speak in one language and then another element that speaks in a different language. And I wasn't too meticulous about my color choices, so I think it looks a little bit too dark, but it's a good starting point to take this and then refine it and make something else of it. And here's another experiment with having an element in the page that's completely different from other elements. I don't think it's very balanced because it's just in this corner, but as I've said many times in this video, I think it's good to experiment, even if the result isn't perfect. Here's another experiment of packing shapes. I guess I was tired at some point of packing these shapes and I just stopped. And another experiment of doodling using brush markers. Here's another one made with brush markers and another one with the acrylic ink. I really like the darker magenta over the lighter similar color. Some more experiments with leaving negative space and filling it in with a simpler design so that it stands out a bit from the more jumbly and detailed designs. And this is a pretty failed experiment of using fine tech Arabic gold over top this acrylic painted background. And another experiment trying to switch up the inks as I go. This is Posca paint markers and a few gel pens over top acrylic. And here I doodled these two sides in black and then I painted this in acrylic and then I doodled over top this using the Spectralite magenta ink. I actually like this one. So out of maybe 10 experiments, you'll have one or two things that you like, but you won't find those things, I think, without those failed experiments. And also experimentation is fun, so 
And here I just painted the background in a solid green and then I drew these on a different piece of paper, cut them out and pasted them in because I really like crisp edges and I was trying to get those crisp edges into this page. And here's one again where I repeated the same simple shape, just the circle, and then filled in the negative space and left some areas in between and colored them in with Copic marker. So I really like how these organic looking patterns can emerge from just really simple shapes that you repeat. Here are a few other packed shapes that are similar. I think this one is from my Doodle Art with Gel Pens class where I showed how you can combine gel pens and black ink. So since gel pens are opaque, or some of them are, you can use them over the black ink or you can use the black ink over the gel pens or just combine them alongside each other. Here you can see some repeated elements again. So that's something I tried to continue with in some of my other doodles. And this one also I think is from my class about combining gel pens and black ink for doodling. This one is also gel pens and black ink. A sketch of a pillow. I watched a YouTube tutorial, I think, about perspective. It was pretty cool, so I tried it out. And this is a sketch of an apple or a value study where I try to find the darks and the lights. And I ended up painting this several times in watercolor. And that's it. The rest of the pages are just scribbles and notes that I can color in with acrylic and then draw over top that if I'd like. So this concludes this sketchbook tour. I hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting. I'd really appreciate it if you left me a comment and let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see, whether more sketchbook tours or tutorials or any other types of videos that I could make. It really encourages me to sit down and actually make these videos when I know that you want something specific. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.